things that's super nice when programming, whether it be HTML or JavaScript, is to use a code editor because it highlights your syntax and it lets you know whether you've done things right or wrong. And you can also get extensions that make things work a little better. So for my classes on JavaScript, I like to use Visual Studio Code. And for that, go on, out onto the web and look for VS Code Download. And you will get to a page that looks like this. And then download it for whatever computer you happen to be using. I'm going to type in code on my Mac to open it up. If you are on Windows, you could find it under a, a program uh, in the Start menu. And um, it comes up looking like this. I've To do my JavaScript development, I have created a folder on my desktop called JavaScript, and I'm going to open that now. So I could either click here, or I could say File, and then I could say Open. And let me go to my desktop, and I have created a, if I sort this, then hopefully someday I find my little folder that says JavaScript out there. Uh, looking, looking, looking. Found it. All right, this over here represents the fact that I'm in the JavaScript folder. I'm gonna go ahead and close that little welcome page. And I'm gonna get started by clicking the little plus sign right here for new file. And I'm gonna call this input.html. Now that may sound a little strange that we're making HTML pages in order to be doing JavaScript, but uh, we can embed JavaScript within HTML pages. So let me go ahead and close this window over here by clicking on that. And now I'm just looking at the HTML page. Okay, uh, to get this started, uh, I wanna create an HTML page with some basic structure. And within Visual Studio Code, I can just do an exclamation point and hit return. For those of you that are familiar with HTML, you'll notice the HTML tag uh, up here and then two important tags, which are head and body. When I'm working with JavaScript, I can put those within script tags. And it's not gonna matter at this point whether I put it within the head or within the body. Just for fun, I'll put it in the body right now. And I've installed an extension called Prettier and done some configuration. So you'll notice on my computer every time I hit save that it, uh, it reformats the location of, of all the tags and the text. And yours isn't gonna do that out of the box, but I would definitely recommend going out and typing in prettier and then learning how to configure that uh, by reading the instructions there. Um, I'm not gonna do that today, uh, but I am gonna do some JavaScript. So. Uh, now that I've got everything ready to go, I'd like to talk about input using uh, some of the things that are built into JavaScript. So one of the things I can do is I can do alert, and this just displays things on the page. Let me go ahead and hit save, and I'm gonna go out to my computer, and I'm going to use this little finder to go to my desktop. I found JavaScript. And there is the icon for an HTML page. If I double click on that, then I'm able to see that little pop-up that I just created. All right, great. Um, let me go ahead and change this. And I'm gonna use a different word in JavaScript, which is called prompt. And I'll say, what is your name? Question mark. And I'll go ahead and hit save. And I'm gonna come back over here and I will reload this page, and I can type something in, and then the page is finished executing. Okay, so what this demonstrates is the fact that I can collect information from the user. Another way would be using a form, but for today we'll use this prompt box. And one of the things I have not done is I haven't done anything to capture that. One of the things we've talked about previously is variables, and we can actually put the answer or the thing that we collect from the input box into a variable. 
So I'll say let, and I'll say string answer equals that. And then I'm going to print it back out to the page by typing alert s answer. All right, so I'll hit save. I'll go back over to here. Reload. What's your name? Pop-up box. There's my name. All right, so this is working nicely. Let's go ahead and improve this program a little bit. And instead, I want to turn this into a guessing game. Uh, so have you ever played that game where you guess a number between 1 and 10? Let's go ahead and do something like that. So I will say uh, I and say, I'll just call this fixed number equals 10. So this is the number that we're trying to guess. I know this is cheating a little bit. And over here, I'll put another thing that says let I guess equals what is your guess. And then in here, we can compare two things. We'll compare the guess with this number that has previously been created. We'll put that right there and we'll hit save. And let's watch this work. So I'll say is nine equal to that thing that we know is actually 10 and that's false. What if we type in 10? 10 is exactly equal to 10. All right, so we've made ourselves a, a fancy little program there that guesses a number. Uh, there's something else that I could do. I could make this actually a little bit more dynamic. I could say math dot random. And random is a function that returns something between zero and nine. So that makes it a little bit uh, tricky to work with. Uh, let's go ahead and change this. I'll say let i random number equals that. And since I'm gonna be playing with this for a little bit, I'm gonna comment out that information. And I have a little typo there. All right, let's go ahead and write this out to the screen. Instead of using the alert box, I will use console.log. And I'll put my random number in there. So I hit save. Let me go back to my web browser. Reload the page. Because I did console.log, that actually is going to come out in the JavaScript console area. So I'll right click on here and do inspect. Then I'll go to console. And there's that number. So if I keep on refreshing, I get a number that is between 0 and 1. All right, if I want to use that in a guessing game, then I need to do something about this. Well, one of the things I can do is I can multiply that by 10. So I'll say that number equals its, um, itself multiplied by 10. And let me move this little statement down. Hit save again. All right, let's watch what happens. Okay, well, now I have that first number looking good but it's too long. So let's go ahead and change this once again. And I will do that number equals math.round. And then I will take that same number in there. And remember this rounds up. So let's see what happens. Four, seven, four, six, Let's just do this a whole bunch of times so that we know that we don't, oh, got a zero. I don't like that. And I get nines. Okay, so it seems like it would be better if I added one to this. So let's go ahead and add one equals itself plus one, and let's just pretend that we're, we're happy with that at this point. Okay, 
Now, instead of guessing what a fixed number is, now I can guess some random number that's between zero and between one and 10, but we're gonna cheat a little bit. So let's go ahead and uncomment that stuff. And I wanna compare the random number that was generated to my guess. And let's see what happens. All right, I come back over here and I'm gonna hit reload. And it says, now it's preemptively already written the random number to the page, so we can cheat a little bit. What's your guess? Four. Yes. All right, how about this number? 10. Yes. Or I guess if we're a terrible guesser, is five equal to five? Or actually, is five equal to six? No. Okay, so we've made a trivial little game there. And if we want to not cheat, we could just comment out that little console.log statements, and then we would be okay. Now, earlier I talked about this type of operator, and just out of curiosity, let's find out what type of data this is that has been pulled in from that input box. So I'll say alert, and I'll say type of, and then we'll put the, the guess variable there. And I'll hit save. Let's go back, do a little reload, and I'll type in three. And it says that's a string. So it's kind of interesting in a way that we pulled in a string and it correctly evaluates these two things. If you recall from a previous discussion, even if one thing's a string and one thing's a number, if we use the double equal sign, it will still correctly compare them. But if I use the triple equal sign, if one's a number and one's a string, even if they, are evalu they evaluate to the same thing, it's not gonna come out right. So, or at least they'll come out as different things. So let's go ahead and reload this and I'll say four, is four equal to four? It's a string, but they're not exactly equal to. At least they're not both the same value and the same type. And I did this so that I could show you a couple of conversions that you could do to your text, which would make it so that something gets turned from text into a number. Uh, two different data conversion functions that we have available to us are parse int and parse float. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So if I take I guess, which currently is evaluating to string, and I say equals to parse int and then I pass in I guess then now we'll see if its type has changed at all so I'll go ahead and hit save come back over to here uh, what's your guess 10 it says this is now a number and that number is with three equal signs exactly equal to the randomly generated number of 10. So sometimes you need to take something that is a string and you need to turn it into a real number in order to do something with it and work with it. So as a side note, uh, if I needed to take something that was a string and turn it into something that's considered to be a decimal, I could do parse float. I don't need it for this particular problem. And then uh, working the other direction, just uh, for fun and as a way to discuss things, I could take something that is a number. Uh, I'll just leave it as parse float. It's not going to hurt anything. And I could take a number and I could call a method on that number and I could say dot to string and that would turn it back into a string again. So I'll say I guess equals I guess dot two strings. So we take a string, we turn it into a number, then we take that number and we turn it back into a string again and see if it is in fact a string. So let's go ahead and test that. And I'll say 10 string false. Let me just run that one more time. Six type string and it's not equal to that other thing anymore. Okay, so high level idea, there's several in fact, but 
One of them is that we can take anything that's a string and turn it into a number, as long as it really is a number, and take something that's a number and turn it into a string. Other things we learned about today are taking information from the user in the form of a prompt box and setting it into a variable and doing something with it. And then lastly, the thing that we covered in this particular video is how to work with random numbers, that you can use this math library called .random and get some number between zero and one. And then if you need it to be of a certain magnitude, like zero to 10 or zero to 100, you could just multiply it by some number to get it in the right range and then just round it off to drop off all the decimal points that you don't care about. I hope you learned enjoying about those things and I will see you in another video.